All right, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here and I am back with another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 replay cast. I uh, do occasionally miss doing just just a uh, one-off StarCraft 2 pro games and so I'm going to try and do a few more here and there and uh part of what makes casting games like these so awesome or games such as this, the last one I did with Bly uh, with Bly and Gung Fu Banda is that pro players recommend them. Sometimes uh, pro players will send me replays and be like, or if, if it ever comes up or whatever, it's like, oh yeah, uh, I played this really awesome game and I'll say, oh man, if a pro player goes ahead and says that a game is a top level game, you know, you know it's the cream because they play a lot of StarCraft 2 and they kind of become desensitized to what's like an amazing game or how good they are. Like, so uh, when they do recommend one, it is definitely worth checking out. And so we're going to be checking out a Terran versus Terran today on the map World of Sleepers. And it involves two of the best European Terrans, two of my favorite players of StarCraft II. In the top right hand side of the map, we've got Emker's Soul. Soul, I, I gush about this guy so often I don't even really need to get into it. And then in the bottom left, it's Liquid Youth Thermal who is a very good European Terran, one of the best European Terrans, and uh, he's got that under his belt. Got some very good results in the past and whatnot, and always fun to watch. So we've got ourselves a TVT, which is always chaotic, and I feel like it's been a while since I cast just like a actual human versus human TVT. So uh, this should be a good match. The map is World of Sleepers, so it could definitely be a long one as uh, TVT can get a little bit aggressive at times, but World of Sleepers is not necessarily the best map for it. So uh, we may just see some more passive play. Now, as far as the builds go coming out of these two players, we have got ourselves a quicker command center from Euthermal, going for the Reaper Expand, whereas Soul. He's actually going for a factory off of one gas, which is a little bit interesting here. This isn't something that you see a ton of, so that's kind of a cool play coming out of Soul. I guess I guess he's like, oh, you thermal scouted me or whatever, so I might try and catch him off guard, but no, there's a factory there, so not catching him off guard. He just wants that little bit of extra muscle, I guess. And he's actually going to try and catch you thermal off guard here with his one random marine and SCV. He wandered across the map. His reaper is now going to go in and he says, surprise you thermal. Here I am with my marine, my reaper and an SCV. That beats just, that beats just a reaper and an SCV. So this is potentially going to delay the command center of you thermal, which is already a bit painful. Now you thermal knows he needs to get this CC up that it can't be delayed too long. So he is going to pull some SCVs to help out on this. Soul though, he's got his Hellion coming on in to join up with this. So while these two micro their hearts out, it looks like Soul could potentially get the upper hand on this as he uh, chases his opponent's Reaper back. He's going to be able to get himself a few more SCV kills from the looks of it. And then probably just be pushed away. So when when the cards are counted, we still see Euthermal taking a bit of damage here. Soul still pressuring his opponent. And in total, Soul managed to rack up five SCV kills for his one SCV and his one Marine. So he's now got himself a slight worker lead. He's about to have his own command center finished up. And things are probably going to equalize a little bit here. Uh, Soul's got the slightly better eco. All things considered, you thermal though, I mean, his orbital's done. It's it's really very minute differences in the build so far. Soul put in a lot of work to make to make maybe a slight worker lead here just by two, three workers, nothing too significant. So a slight lead for Soul starting this off. A lot of work in order to pressure you thermal like that as uh, just trying to overpower your opponent. It can be done at times. But oh, look at this. Look at what Euthermal is doing right now. He's going to be going for a mass Hellion play behind this. Uh, this could potentially be bad news bears for some of, for Soul basically, if Euthermal's Hellions are able to get the upper hand on him. TVT is all about knowing exactly how much you have and trying to think, right, when can I catch my opponent off guard? What can I do to make him falter and not like, I'm, in rock, paper, scissors, I'm going to do rock, so i got to make sure he's not doing paper, etc, etc. So right now we see you thermal thinking, right, you might not have that much, so you might have uh, cut some corners. Soul, however, did make a cycle. He made a fair few more units, so he should...
should be able to shut down these Hellions uh, relatively easily. Of course, Hellions are always going to get some worker kills, so we're seeing six SCVs go down, partially due to this Liberator, which parked right underneath Soul's main base. So, the Thermal, he committed a fair bit to that attack. He got himself six workers in total, and all of a sudden, the worker count is very evened up. Now, the thing as is for you, Thermal, is that he committed a lot to get that uh, to get that damage done. He committed eight Hellions, which is no small amount. That's 800 minerals. Could have been two command centers if you think about it like that. So, no small commitment there from you, Thermal. Soul defended it, losing six workers versus eight Hellions is definitely definitely acceptable so not not bad at all for soul the game though still despite both the aggressions from both these players it's evening out G games like this do tend to even on out as a result uh, the worker count pretty darn even he thermals getting up to third command center whereas soul he hasn't shown he's going for that just yet and there we go there's his third command center it's going to be on location for those of you unaware, uh, or for those of you that don't watch a lot of TVT, this is generally what happens in a TVT. One player will have the slight lead, in a sense, which Soul feels the thermal has the lead. And so Soul goes for the faster third command center, or the third command center on location, quicker than his opponent, in order to cut, cut his slight deficit in CC timing. That's just exactly how TVT plays out. There's this kind of beauty to the matchup as far as the two players facing off. Now, we take a look here. Euthermal is going to be moving in with his Liberator once again to try and get some more harassment done. We'll see if Soul is going to lose some workers or not to this. He's got two Ravens and two Vikings, probably going to interfere in the Matrix this. Uh, no, he actually doesn't. So he will lose himself a few workers, three workers to the Liberator. Not great, not terrible for both sides. It seems like TVT has this natural way of evening itself out. However, if we take a look at the game right now, we're seeing our first major tell of where the game is going to go. Euthermal, he's gone for the double armory play, so that basically means he's going to be going for some very quick upgrades and is going to be playing, without a shadow of a doubt, mech. So Euthermal, he's been playing a little bit more mech, I feel, in some of the matches I've seen of him. He's always done it a fair bit, but uh, pretty consistently at this point. Going to be mecking, taking his third base... All the while, Soul already has his. Soul getting up stim pack, so he's going to be playing bio. I haven't seen Soul mech too much, honestly. He's a very bio heavy, bio heavy Terran. Stim pack is on the way here for Soul, so that's going to be finishing on up soon, and then it's likely going to be getting followed up by just reactors, add-ons, everything else that follows Terran bioproduction. The question is for Soul, how will you deal with this mecking Terran player? Because a mecking Terran can be very, very tough to deal with. They can be incredibly, incredibly annoying because you want to queue up and play a ladder game on StarCraft 2, just have a bit of fun after work or after class, something like that, and all of a sudden you run into this Terran who's mecking who doesn't want to leave his hole, who wants to drag the game out. And then you're just like, oh, what do I do about this? Well, let's try and end the game and kill the mecking Terran as quick as possible. That is very tough to do because of the nature of siege tanks, how good defensively they are. So Soul, a very, very respectable and mature Terran, isn't just going to dive on in here, essentially saying YOLO. He's going to have to be very careful about how he goes about this. And as a result... We might just see a macro up behind this even more because you really have, say, three options to deal with to deal with the mech if you're the bio player. The first is that you can just try and hit a timing attack, kill the mech and Terran. It's a lot easier to kill the mech and Terran the earlier the game is. Second, you can try and macro up and try and take a ton of bases, being incredibly greedy. And I say greedy because a mecking Terran absolutely can push out and try and kill you. The third is that you can try and take complete sky control. And so that could be the option that Soul goes for here. It is possible that you can be greedy and go for sky Terran. That is definitely a choice. However, it usually is just one of those three options as far as how you how you got to deal with what your opponent's doing. Soul's probably going to want to try and assert his army presence. 
as much as possible to try and delay any fourth base from Euthermal, but Euthermal, he's already got that fourth command center building, and once Mech is on four bases, it becomes very tough to shut down. So Sol, he's already saying, right, whatever, I'm not going to be able to kill you, Euthermal, so he's throwing up more starports here. He's getting up a fusion core as well, so most likely going to be Mass Viking Liberator to try and seize the air control. Euthermal, though, we take a look. He's already unseaging some of his tanks. He's going to be moving out to try and take this fourth base. Really lock down his side of the map by securing this base. Sol isn't in position to intercept this either, which I think is a bit of a shame. He could have maybe positioned his tanks a bit more aggressively, but of course, he knows his opponent has mass Raven spikes. So you've got to be very, very careful. Ravens can easily make it so you take a bad fight. And as a result, we see Sol right now just being like, fine, I'll back off. And the reason we're not seeing Sol be more aggressive with his bio this game is simply the fact of the matter that he's producing just Vikings behind this, essentially. He's just going hard into the sky because he knows he can't beat his opponent with his ground force. Now, we're 11 minutes into the game. Ladies and gentlemen, let us try and hit 40 likes on this video, so make sure to slap that like button if you enjoy this type of commentary. And then, of course, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I commentate a lot of StarCraft 2, some of it basically for everybody, and so make sure to keep your eyes open for that. Now, uh, we'll just uh, see how this game's progressing. Euthermal going hard on his 2-2 upgrades, so his mech force is going to be very strong. Soul go throwing up three command centers right now at a time. It's what you gotta do against a mecking Terran. You gotta try and hold them back, but then, oh, look at that. Hellion run by from from you, Thermal. Nicely done. Soul's gonna have to replace those SCVs. Anything that you Thermal can do to make Soul falter is like a ripple effect, because if you're the bio Terran and you let essentially your enemy gain momentum in the game back, then it is incredibly hard to rein it back in. Once a mecking Terran is kind of like standing tall and really solidified. It is just tough to deal with. Right now we take a look. Soul making seven liberators at a time, which is nuts. Seven liberators at a time is not cheap at all. I mean, liberators are not cheap units. So that's just nuts how Soul's committing that much to that. We do take a look though. Both players are approaching Max. The thermal wants to push out because he thinks he made the time here. Soul Bio's trying to buffer as much as it possibly can. But the second the thermal siege tank up is that bio is going to evaporate, however, we take a look now, and all of a sudden, Soul reveals his hand, he reveals his mass viking, his liberators are going to come on in two, they're going to set up, and there's only two doors here for you, Thermal, so they can actually fall to the liberators, and when they do, Soul could potentially clean this army, however, it looks like Soul might have gone into liberator production a little bit too quickly, as he loses, as he loses the... Uh, his air fight, and then Euthermal makes a massive mistake as he walks forward with his siege tanks, with his stores. I think that might have been a padding mistake as he completely loses that advantage he had. He kept his tanks alive, he got a good trade off, but then he walked forward with his, his stores, with his siege tanks. He ate some very nasty shots. And the game is going to progress from here. Right now, Sol knows that his bio is essentially useless versus what Euthermal's got, so he's gonna go hard, hard, hard in the air, and Euthermal's saying, right, you're just gonna be trying to figure out how to deal with me, so I just need to keep macroing up, keep producing units. He's gonna get up his fifth base, which is good to see, and he's also gonna try and slow Soul down with these Hellion runbys. Now, Soul is uh, gonna be losing some STVs here, however, the planetary really helps defend in this situation. And ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to play, play bio against the mech, or mech, versus mech to avoid Hellion front buys, high sec auto tracking actually makes your life so, so much easier. More SCVs are gonna die here, by the way. And I say high sec auto tracking, it's just like something that if you're, that if you have a hard time dealing with run buys, like in my own ladder game, uh, it's very, very good to help deal with this kind of thing because it helps the planetary fortress shoot farther, kill the Hellions so they can't just park behind your mineral line. And that means that you can pay your attention elsewhere and the planetary can do the job uh, a lot easier. That's just something to think about if you play like at a lower level like I do compared to compared to pro players, that's for sure. Now, Hellion run by is running out once once again for Euthermal. These can start to add up in their costs, though. He's got to be careful on that front. 
as uh, you gotta kill at least eight SCVs for them to be financially worth it. Of course, you can slow down your opponent's actual mining rate, but Soul can just drop mules as long as he replaces the SCVs that he loses. It's fine, but take a look at that. That is definitely more than eight dead SCVs for the four Hellions. To make that 16, these Hellions have already paid for themselves, so Soul's economy is actually getting slowed down a lot. I mean, losing a few SCVs is all right, but he just lost 23, which is no small amount to these Hellbats. Uh, Soul's definitely gonna need to replace those. He'll have an easy time doing that, since he can make eight SCVs at a time. But he's got to be careful not to have things like that slow down his progress in this game. Not slow, not pull his attention away. Slow down his remax. Slow down his uh, building up. Uh, Ethermal losing some SCVs. No, that wasn't another misclick. That was simply him trying to free up some more supply in order to build the best mech army possible. StarCraft II games often can become who's got the best army and sacrificing some workers to have a better army can allow you to win that game. Right now though, I am very concerned here for Soul. As you thermal, he's got that dream composition. He's got a nice army in the skies. He's got Thors on the ground in case he doesn't win an air fight, but then he's got a good tank count as well on the ground to help himself out. And this is gonna make it very tough for Soul to deal with this army. Soul, however, has got himself up 11 Liberators, which is quite nice. I don't know if it's enough Liberators to deal with all these floors, but either way, Soul's just gonna try and dive on top of his opponent, apparently giving you Thermal a second to set up, which was probably the right choice, because his Liberators are going to shred the Thors, his Vikings are gonna win the air fight. And Soul cleans you Thermal's army by taking a snap engage in their snap engagement, doing wonders for Soul. Or that this snap engagement doing wonders for Soul, allowing him to just clean up Ethermal's army. Whereas if Ethermal was set up there, if Ethermal maybe had his Vikings ready to pull back or something like that, and could have used his Thors, might have gone a lot better for Ethermal there. But Soul took a nice battle there. He's also scanning his opponent right now, saying, "Right, what are you up to, Ethermal? How's your eco progressing? Because we know Soul's own eco progression has been slowed down a little bit." Thanks to these constant Hellion runbys of Euthermal. Now, Soul, however, is going to move on in here, and oh, Euthermal hasn't actually built a single turret. This is a big mistake here. Soul can just set up his Liberators here. He can probably even land his Vikings, maybe to help out. Yeah, he's going to do that, and the Vikings, they deal a lot of damage against Thors. So, Soul, uh, he could have had a great engagement there, but the fact he didn't set up his Liberators right away is allowing Euthermal to push him back. That's actually a pretty big mistake, I feel, from Soul. The fact that he didn't siege up those Liberators, he probably could have got this base if he did right away. That being said, though, he's also going for Liberator Harassment, shutting down the Thermal's economy a little bit. That's also very important because neither of these players are comfortably maxed out with a bank, so slowing down your opponent's economy, particularly for something cheap like a Liberator to the effect that it does it, can be absolutely worth it. Now, uh, these Hellions gonna be going for a run-by once again. Soul's gonna wanna deal with this. Uh, he hasn't dealt with it yet, though, and he's gonna lose some more SCVs. Just land the Viking Soul. He's gonna siege up all of his Liberators to deal with a few Hellions. I should also point out, I think it would be good for Soul and Euthermal, likewise, to go for that transformation service. We see Euthermal has got it, which will benefit his Thors, but if Soul needs to land his Vikings quickly, that can definitely help out. Uh, the one Marauder going to be microed against this Hellion. Soul has taken constant, constant Hellion runbys. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the guessing game. How many SCVs of Soul have died? I'm going to place my bet set a solid 43. Uh, how many? 74. Holy cow. I was thinking that might have been like in the 50s, maybe. But oh man, that is a lot of dead SCVs this game. That is a lot of dead SCVs. Thermal, really slowing down Soul's economy. Of course, Soul's economy isn't at a tipping point in which it's irrecoverable, but this is still nice damage from you, Thermal. The Hellions have pretty much always paid for them. They've definitely slowed Soul's growth down. And so that is very nice. We take a look at the armies that are being built. Euthermal is basically just going mass Thor Viking because he knows that there is essentially just Liberators and Vikings in the sky for his opponents, so Thor is going to be answered that. This is why I think it's important to include a few siege tanks in your army in this kind of situation. 
as they work wonders against the Thors. Sol realizes that Euthermal is just going to be going for a bit of a base race, and he's going to pull back his whole army. These two battle cruisers that Sol had made, though, are actually going to die. They're not going to get the base. Sol's going to try and dive on top of this army, force back the Thors and Liberators. A couple Thors are going to go down, but uh, this is actually going pretty well for Euthermal, I feel. Sol now has got a few siege tanks with his army, which is actually so, so important. I must say it again. The Thors will actually just win out if you don't have any siege tanks in your forces. Oh, look at this. Euthermal getting an engagement as Sol goes for it. He's going to land his Vikings to help out as the Liberators are skirmishing with these Thors. The Vikings actually working wonders, though, against these Thors. It can't be, it can't be understated how good mass Viking is against Thors. So... Very, very good decision there by Sol just to land the Vikings, Euthermal. Maybe needed some tanks of his own or Hellbats or just better positioning in that fight as he was a bit split up. And we tally things up and take a look at the supply. Sol is at 151 to 135 of Euthermal. Both players are pretty close, however things are getting a bit more dire for Euthermal. His economy is good, but it's not great. So losing bases, losing maybe another fight could put him at a tipping point in which he's not able to recover. So we see him once again go for more Hellion runbys. He says, my economy is not great. I'm going to slow down you. Soldo does have some bio in position here that should be able to deal with these Hellions. All the while, Sol is looking to keep the pressure on his opponent, moving in with a bit of bio. He's going for Liberator Harassment at his opponent's bases. Some Marines running to the top right. This is worth its weight in gold for Sol. Euthermal's economy, as I said before, is not invincible at this point. He can't afford to take mass amounts of economic damage. He can afford to take some, just like Sol has done, but he can't afford to take so much because as a mech and Karen, rebuilding your army costs so, so much and takes so, so long. Sol is rebuilding SCVs as well right now, which I have to say is very, very important. As a StarCraft II player, it is so, 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 so easy to simply forget for a minute to replace your workers as at the late game you can because it doesn't really register how many have died soul has lost a lot of scvs but he's also remade a lot which is very important otherwise his economy could fall behind then all of a sudden you take a bad fight you can't afford to replace it that's why rebuilding your scvs is always worth it now we take a look here soul's looking to push on into the thermal side of the map he's potentially going to get himself a nice spot here since he's got siege tanks and liberators He's going to be able to zone Euthermal out of this location. Bases are going to lift up for Euthermal. And Sol is going to be losing mass SCVs as this is going on. I'm not sure where. Uh, I'm guessing more Hellion run by somewhere. However, if we just take a look right now, this is definitely a good position for Sol. He's killing Euthermal's SCVs as they run away. Not getting all of them. Getting some of them, though. He's going to pick off that base. He killed the base in the top left. Looks like some Hellions are going to be getting more SCV kills of Soul, but Soul has constantly replaced his SCVs, which is very, very important. There's where some of the SCVs have died. More harassment. I gotta say, Euthermal's Hellion harassment would uh, would definitely have taken down a lesser player, but Soul has done a good job rebuilding his SCVs every step of the way. Uh, without that, I mean, Euthermal definitely could have made Soul wear thin, but uh, just Soul has constantly replaced these which has really kept him in this game. He could have absolutely lost this game if he hasn't been replacing these. Now, there is still a chance that Euthermal can bring this back. Like I said, StarCraft 2 is all about single army fights. Right now, Hellbats are gonna morph or transform right on top of those tanks in the bio army. So that's a bit of a nice engagement on the ground for Euthermal, but he's still gotta deal with the mass air army that Sol has. He's gonna lose himself in Thor. His Vikings are skirmishing under Thor support which is nice, but Euthermal, he's still got to take that one wonder fight. And we, it looks like he's going to try and flank Soul's army here. He's going to get a jump on top of these Liberators. Uh, the Thors of Euthermal are going to try and capture this army, and this could potentially be a nice pickoff for him. Liberators are tanky, but still, every pickoff matters at a time like this. Euthermal, he's really pulled Soul out of position. He's in an uncomfortable spot as Soul's going to try and run away. And he's actually just going to take a fight right now as he sieges up his Liberators. They're going to shell away on one or two of the Thors. But in the end, Soul's army is drastically falling in supply. Euthermal, with a big fight, may have been able to turn this game around. Planetary Fortress eating Thor shots going to go down like nothing. PFs are strong, but Thors are very strong. 
deal tons of damage to counteract that PFHP and armor. We take a look at those soul counterattacking liberators killed up floating command center. That's not something you see every day. That orbital command goes down. Soul just trying to make as many units as he can. Suddenly we're looking at a position in which both these players really just have the one army to their name and they don't have a ton of resources to replace it. He's thermal. He lost this base. Soul lost this base. Soul's taking constant hellion harassment, so neither of these players are flushed with cash. Euthermal realizes this and is just focusing on trying to get his economy going as well as possible. Liberator gonna get some kills as well. Soul has lost another 19 workers. This is insane. So, so many dead workers this game. Soul has been trying to clean up these hellion runbys, but there's always been another from Euthermal, and this is absolutely the most pivotal point of Euthermal's play this game, I feel. The fact that he's been constantly, constantly going for these Hellion runbys. If he hadn't been, Soul's economy might be a lot better than Euthermal's. This Hellbat still giving Euther still giving Soul grief. But then look at this. Every time Soul tries to reestablish his economy, every SCV he makes, he's gonna lose more to a to a Hellion runby. He can't even mine at this PF due to the nice placement from Euthermal. He's a uh, Marauders will try and clean this up and they'll do that. So that's nice for him, but this is still a big pain for Soul, who's now fallen back onto Bio because he knows how important Bio is in smaller army situations. And since both players are down on supply and down on army, the Bio is a little bit more relevant again. Euthermal still going for harassment and whatnot. Uh, Hellions, even a Thor attacking this PF is actually going to kill it. That being said, Soul is getting some of his own damage done at this base. He's going to be able to zone you thermal out, knock out a big portion of you thermal's economy. This orbital is going to die. The SCVs are alive in the top left, luckily for them. You thermal still got the better army at this point in the game, though not just supply wise, but also just tech wise. These Thors, these siege tanks that he's got, are pretty tough to take down with just the bio force that Soul has. And oh my gosh, another Hellion run by from Euthermal. Soul is probably cursing Euthermal right now, saying to stop it, stop it, stop it. He's just so, so relentless with his sick, sick harassment. And now we take a look. Euthermal, he's looking to move on in. He's looking to take a good fight. And I think he may be able to. Soul has 16 Liberators, but that's against 13 Thors. He's got a good chunk of bio, but I don't know if it's enough bio. The supply is close, very close at this point. It really could just be all about the positioning for a fight. Does Euthermal walk into a bunch of bad Liberator shots? That could be seen. Is the bio able to get on top of the Thors before the tank siege up? That's the question. Is Soul going to go for it? Yes, he is. This could be the final fight of the game. Liberators are getting set up, but they're kind of eating Thor shots before they do. The most of them do get set up, though. The Vikings are going to land to help out. The Liberators are chewing up a ton of the Thors. There's only three Thors, two Thors left. It's one final engagement, and it looks like Soul was able to take this engagement. The supply, though, still very, very close as both players took massive losses. Uh, Euthermal will end up losing that final Thor out on the map, though. And Soul is up on army supply. Both players are making everything they can. Euthermal making tons of Hellions since he's got mainly just minerals due to that mule money. And now he's going to have to try and hold on against what Soul has. But Soul has the air control, which can be pivotal in a situation like this. He's able to set up his Liberators. He's able to chase Euthermal away. And these Liberators are going to deny mining on Euthermal's side of the map. And both these players have essentially no economy at this point in the game. So every worker killed is so important. Euthermal, he's barely mining at this point now. Soul, of course, has also taken massive economic damage, but that's kind of just been the way Soul's been this entire game <laughs> with losing so, so many units. It's like, oh, no big deal losing more SCVs for Soul, but Euthermal, he is really running out of mining opportunities here, so he's going to transfer more SCVs. He's going to float over another base here. He's really running low on his orbital commands compared to what he was, and this is how these players are both just running out of steam but euthermal does end up falling to soul as soul takes the victory just in such a close game and don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen after the spiel here i'm gonna check how many scvs have died this game so ladies and gentlemen let's try and hit 40 likes on this video this was an epic tvt just two top european terrans 
If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I implore you to subscribe as it uh, shows the support. I'm gonna try and hit 10,000 subs by the end of uh, by the end of the year. And then uh, there's a Discord linked in the description of every video. And of course, there's also memberships on the channel if you feel so inclined. You can check those out. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. Let's take a look. My official guess for the SCVs that have died this game. Enter your guesses now. I'm gonna go ahead to say 147. 172. Close. I, I, I'm pretty happy with that. A margin of 30 SCVs. I'll take it. 172 dead SCVs in this pro StarCraft 2 game. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time. This has been Laughing Games.